In this episode, we're going to be opening and testing the longer Ray 5 10 watt laser to see just how easy it is to assemble and use, as well as is it worth the price? Better stay tuned. This is your Geek Fix. Well, it's happened again. Even though I said back in the day that I would never probably have a laser engraver in my house because, you know, it's a fire hazard. I've really been sold on dialed lasers. I, I feel like they've worked great for me. I haven't had any issues with them. And it seems like they're getting more and more powerful at a better and better price. So when I got contacted by Longer, which is more known to me for their 3D printers, because they actually have a number of dialed lasers to choose from, now this is the Ray 5 10 watt laser. And uh, I will say we have had a variety of lasers that we've opened so far and that we own. So I've had a 10 watt laser, I've had a 20 watt laser, I've had essentially a 40 watt laser. So I'm gonna treat this more as an entry level laser in relation to its power. And also I wanna compare it and, and be more realistic in what we're comparing it to because of course the expectations will be in relation to that 10 watts. Naturally, the biggest thing that'll separate lasers will be the, the wattage uh, that it uses. So in this case, I'll be comparing it to our X-Tool 10 watt laser. Now, another thing that'll kind of separate this out from some of our other lasers is that most of the time when we get something to open by a company, they haven't actually fully developed it yet. So they don't have all the instructions available or, or everything for me to test out. Uh, in this case, it will be exactly as you would receive it, is, is how we're opening this. And I decided the best way to test this out was by having my son open it. You might know him better as Timmy from the Fallout videos. And since he's finishing high school, heading to college, I figured he'd be the best one to test out opening and assembling this. Not to mention ease of use. You unboxed it, you put yeah. it together. Any problems with that? Was it difficult Actually, at all? Actually, it was like super easy. Yeah. Um, framing, like setting up the frame was super easy. Um, I did make a mistake in not putting this on before I put oh, yeah. on the last bar, but other than that, yeah, it's it's it was super easy to put together. There's so. only what was it six steps or oh, eight yeah. steps? Oops. Seven steps. Seven yeah. steps to put it together. It is different than some of our other. So so we have three now uh, cutters, and uh, each of those laser engravers or cutters. What uh, each the way that a lot of those work um, is that they have the motors on the insides of these rails, and then they're pulling on the uh, ribbons, which then allow it to move back and forth. This one is set up differently. Uh, so you actually had to go through with the ribbon, set up all the ribbon yeah. pieces, but then the motor is actually on the actual laser itself and on the rail itself. Uh, so it's literally driving itself back and forth uh, as, it, as it goes. Um, how, how easy was that? Or was that hard at all? Like threading these, um, it, was, it was a little hard getting um, these keepers in. Uh, what what keeps these ribbons uh, tight, but um, threading it through is pretty easy. And then it, it was a little bit hard getting it up and around right here, um, and then just threading it through these small holes. But uh, other than that, it took about five minutes. Five minutes to, to thread it all? Yeah. That's pretty good. So is the motor, so as far as that goes, it is exactly the same type of mechanism on all yeah, three? Yeah, all three of the bars. Um, now, one thing that this didn't come with, uh, and most don't, most lasers don't come with a honeycomb or with the plate uh, for underneath it to keep it from burning your table. I highly recommend getting that before you actually start assembling this. Um, otherwise, you're gonna run into some problems, either burning stuff that's underneath or whatever. This is kind of helps with fire hazard. It also helps to keep your, your the things that you're burning kind of clean. It did come with glasses though. It did come with glasses. It actually that's came really with some nice. nicer glasses than some of, even my more expensive ones came with. That, they look nicer, I should say. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, that's not too shabby. This also has an actual interface on it, like a, an actual screen. 
uh, and it allows you to connect uh, or to control it in a few different ways. So what were the different ways that you had to be able to, to burn? You could uh, put in files through the SD card. Yeah, so the files that were on the disc that it came with, these files are made for the piece of balsa wood that they send with it. They sent three. Um, wood. Oh, they sent three of them. Oh, yeah. there you go. They're kind of card size. Um, brush. And, and a brush to kind of brush it off afterwards. Probably they also clean the unit. Uh, it looks like they were all uh, GRBL or Gerbil files. And so the, the thing I, that I will say is, I think we only have one cutter that actually has a proprietary software. Uh, and I think that was the Xtool. Xtool had its own software that had everything kind of preset up. All the other ones really, you get a variety of choices in both free software as well as those that, that you could pay for. So in this case, you got Laser Gerbil and you also have the option of Lightburn. I kind of recommend using Laser Gerbil uh, for your first time around anyways. It's not hard to use. Uh, you just go in, you create the file, you tell it how you want it to burn, and then uh, you can save it to that disk and you can just pop it in and you can use the interface on the front. The other option is, like you said, you can connect it to a computer uh, with this cable and uh, then we are able to print from the computer so they so either light burn or laser gerbil would actually be controlling the unit and telling it uh, what to do the third option is for connecting by wi-fi to your laser burn app this also allows you to bring in and create new files as well as monitor your burn there is an additional benefit that comes with Lightburn, which is that it it has, because of the people that are out there, uh, that, that also contribute their settings and, and their some of their files as well, that when you go in, you can pretty much find your exact model and a laser cutter. So then it can, it can do a lot of the work on its own. But honestly, I mean, for the files, of course, these files, they set up themselves, but I mean, that burn, this one's the, uh, we did a little compass and it looks beautiful the thing that you're wanting to look for when it comes to etching or, or burning into wood is that you don't want anything where you see too much flare or burn on the outside and this is perfect I mean it looks it looks awesome and it cut pretty deep too I mean honestly for something this deep I could see it cutting pretty well and it can even cut through pretty thick wood compared to our X tool. I've talked a lot about fires and disruptions that can happen during the print and Longer has a solution for this. It has a fire sensor and alarm with an emergency shutoff and it can also turn off the unit when it senses a bump or shock. So comparatively speaking, uh, this laser did just as well, maybe even better in some ways. I will also say, even though it didn't, didn't have that proprietary software, at the same time, this also has the interface on the front uh, that allows me to do a lot more than I could with my X tool. And, uh, and the price difference is huge. And uh, probably like many of the other lasers, you could upgrade this laser over time by buying one of their other modules as they release them. We also cut in to some plastic uh, just to see how well it could do, uh, of course, the other factor is, number one, it's really not good to be in the room. We actually stayed in the room because we were filming. I don't, never recommend doing that. Never recommend looking at the laser, even with the glasses. And glasses aren't always guaranteed to be rated for the laser. But at the same time, uh, this, uh, yeah, when you're burning plastic or when you're cutting into plastic, uh, of course, it also releases fumes and things. So, you know, making sure that you're in a place that has good oxygen uh, flow to it. That's right. The, uh, <laughs> the, the X tool had the... Um... Well, you could buy a... And you could do this for with any... Probably any of the cutters. You can buy uh, boxes that you literally put over these diode lasers. And then it will actually help evacuate any smoke or any fumes and send them outside. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, one of the benefits to this is I could take this outside even and cut with it pretty easily, uh, lowering, you know, also any chances for any any problems that I might run into. Also, this is the smallest, I will say, bed-wise of any lasers we've used. But on the flip side, everything I've cut so far would fit within this size. But we've also shown in the past that one of the benefits of having a diode laser like this, that in programs like Lightburn, I can actually set it up in quadrants so I could actually put this down, cut one portion, put it into the next spot, and it would continue cutting. So that means that I'm not limited really by the size of this unit. 
in what I cut. This is also a company that makes 3D printers and things like that. In each of these videos I mentioned that I feel like the, the gap and being able to do a lot of these things at home is getting smaller and smaller where, where people have more of these tools in their homes because one, the price range is more reasonable and number two, they're just easy to use. We literally took this out and set it up uh, and within a couple of hours we did a few burns and, uh, and are pretty satisfied with it. Be sure to check out their website if you're interested in this item or any of their other items. I know I'm kind of interested in a couple of their 3D printers at this point in time. Also check out the types of videos that we typically make. Be sure to subscribe and click that reminder bell so you know when new videos come out. And stay tuned for more from your Geek Fix.